Hello everybody and welcome back to 11.3, the developer video for 11.3 is here. My name is Papa Bouja and I am here with Jean. Jean, how you doing? Hello, doing great. You're speaking so fast. Amazing. Yes, I'm so excited because um, it's almost springtime and with it, uh, we're having a new update coming out in March. Um, you're probably watching this on a Monday. That means the update is coming out the next day on Tuesday. And together with this video, you will be checking out the patch notes for this update. And it's an interesting one because um, we have some balance changes, but we have more. And to yeah. talk about that more part, um, Jean, tell us like what's what's going to happen with 11.3. So we usually start with balance challenges and then go to uh, the bonus stuff. But this time uh, we need to talk about the bonus stuff first. And the bonus stuff first is that we're bringing a reworked draft. Woo! Long awaited, <laughs> very much so. Um, and to talk about this, we need to talk a bit about context. So. It won't come as a surprise to many people that we had a few issues with the previous iteration of Draft. Um, the way Draft works is that we would end craft specific packages and which then add specific rules where you would be more likely to find specific packages depending on other stuff that you had previously drafted. Now the problem with the system is that it took way too much time because uh, it meant that we constantly had to come back to it to make new packages, to update packages based on like balance changes we did, etc. But also to balance uh, the, the system, right? In terms of what the weights toward finding uh, all other packages were and whatnot. Um, and, and we, in general, had problems with having enough variety. And uh, well, obviously all of that future proof proofness problem where it was always requiring our input and we just didn't have time for it so what happened is that uh, for, for some time now the mode has been pretty much abandoned and in the context of Gwenfinity we wanted uh, to bring a solution that would allow it to work even though things keep changing basically mm -hmm. so a lot of what draft is currently, the way it works and whatnot, uh, it will actually stay the same and we've actually really focused on the drafting itself, right? So we've removed the concept of core cards and instead, after picking your little ability, you will now draft uh, cards by packages of free, like you could always kind of do in the current draft. Uh, and you will do so until you have a 24 card deck. Mm -hmm. Now, the packages we show you, they obey two main rules. The first one is, every card in a specific package is of the same faction. So it can be any of the six factions, but also neutrals, mm -hmm. so seven different types. And the second rule is, any package uh, contains between 20 and 26 provisions, and uh, they may be of three different types. So there is polarity, where you will have a very expensive gold and uh, two cheap bronzes. There will be neutrality, where you have one bronze, one uh, mid-costed gold and one more expensive gold. And then you will have the equality type, where you have three uh, mid-costed golds, basically. Okay. Now, outside of these rules, anything goes. So the packages are basically <laughs> fully random and uh, any card that you may own, uh, like you may find in the deck builder, can be in these packages regardless of if you have that card or not. Um, on top of this, after each match, you will be faced with a skippable step where you can add one more random package. Um, and if you do so, you also have to remove one of the packages that is already in your deck out of the choice of three random ones. Uh, and finally, one more change we did is that uh, draft matches will have a special reduced uh, um, turn timer. So the, it is usually 60 seconds and in draft it's going to be 25 seconds. And as a reference, uh, the much beloved Battle Rush <laughs> mode is eight seconds. Mm -hmm. um, 
So the goal with these changes is that we want to, first of all, increase the variety of draft because that was a huge problem and honestly there's nothing better than randomness to improve variety. Uh, but also we want to make it future-proof and that's why we have these very broad goals instead of the, the handcrafted synergy we used to go for because then we don't need to rely on this kind of stuff as much and uh, it can stay relevant uh, because it's random, right? So it doesn't yeah. matter all that much. Um, but also we kind of wanted to distinguish draft as its own, as its own experience a bit, a bit more. And this is why, for instance, we're reducing the turn timer, right? We're not expecting draft decks to be as deep as ones you might have in constructed games. Mm -hmm. So instead, we decided to make matches faster so that they feel more intense and also that kind of for a quicker experience that you might go for when you don't have as much time or don't want to put as much time in a regular constructed match. Uh, finally, the reason we focus so much on these free cards packages um, is because it kind of creates this double benefit where, first of all, the entire drafting step is faster, right, that, than if you had to draft 24 cards separately. Mm -hmm. um, but also it creates these very interesting dilemmas where, well, sometimes you will have to pick the worst, the, the best out of the worst options, yeah, right? Exactly. The one that is the less mm -hmm. uh, bad. Um, and, and we think this kind of stuff, this kind of challenges is interesting. Yeah. It brings, it brings now, a lot of variety also to the thing. And like you said, randomness, which yes. is something that's really cool. Uh, now, sometimes, so e e we, we do want to make uh, stuff a bit more synergistic though. And so to help with that, we are actually introducing a change to uh, a few cards in the game, I think 13 total in totals. Mm. So for instance, uh, with Amphibious Assault, uh, it's a card that used to specify uh, that you had to play a Northern Realm card. And now it will specify that you need to play a non-neutral unit. So big difference is, well, in Constructed, in your Northern Realm deck, there is little chances that you had anything other than a Northern Realm card or a neutral one. True. But then in Draft, this makes it much easier to actually use Amphibious Assault regardless of what is in your deck. And uh, any other card that had a condition like this, that was, oh, you may only target cards from your faction, has been kind of changed to this non-neutral thing. Yeah. Um, another change we actually did, oh, th this also affects the Harmony keyword, by the way, which mm -hmm. also used to say uh, that you had to, it was when you played the Squiatel units, now it works with on any non-neutral unit. And another change we did is with Renfrey and Renfrey Gang, uh, we made an Eden change. It's not actually in, in, in the card text, but if you you know read the text, it requires 25 units, which well, is not possible in draft where you're gonna have 24 cards. Uh, so instead, as long as your deck only contains units, uh, then they will work. Okay. We've, we've added that little Eden rule so mm -hmm. that you, they, they're not complete bricks. Um, so yeah, this this is it for draft. Nice. Um, we are limited in in the type of changes we can do mm -hmm. to it. This is also why some some of these decisions were, ta were taken. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we will look at the reception of the new moods and adjust what we can adjust uh, if there are things to adjust. Perfect. So that is everything for the draft changes. Um, now mm -hmm. we'll be moving on to 11.3. But before we talk about 11.3 and the balance changes that are coming to multiplayer, um, can you tell us what's the overall idea when it comes to changes for 11.3 and maybe comparing everything to what happened in 11.2? Yeah, so we are in actually in a very similar state to 11.2, uh, where in 11.2 we said we were very satisfied with the, with the state of the meta, right? A lot of deck variety. Uh, there was a few decks that were uh, on, on top, which is why we addressed them. Mm -hmm. but then coming out of this, everything looks really good. Cool. Uh, we still have a lot of variety. The decks that were very high have uh, gotten back in the average of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are in a state where we just don't know what to touch, and uh, we don't. And we figure it's better to not disturb the meta too much before 11.4. Yeah, because 11.4 will be new cards, so new yes, cards for yes. sure will be bringing expansion. Some changes. Yes. 
That being said, uh, we don't want to leave you with nothing, so obviously we're bringing some buff and reworks, and uh, we've kind of kept looking at neutral cards, and we have decided to actually touch the neutral bandits. That's, mm -hmm. that's been a request from players for some time. And the way we've decided to touch them is kind of uh, tie them together inside of a bonded archetype. Mm -hmm. And that's what we will review right now. Okay. And we'll be starting with Iron Falcon uh, Knife Juggler, which I'll show in a second. There we go. So Human Bandit and uh, new ability here. Um, Zeal order damage enemy unit by one. Bonded also given a bleeding one. Whenever you play a bonded unit, refresh the order. Four power, five provision. Yes. So obviously we're talking about bonded. We need to talk about some bronzes first. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this card first is that it is actually the one that inspired us to... Uh, th th this was a starting point for us um, to work on, on Bonded and, and the desire to tie it to Bandits. Um, it is a fairly straightforward card, right? It's an engine that will refresh whenever you play a Bonded, so that gives you like a strong incentive to have a lot of Bonded cards in your deck. Um, and it is a Bonded card itself, right? Where it becomes a quite potent engine. And based off this, uh, we have worked on adding more Bonded neutral, neutral cards. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have um, Cutthroat and some others. Mm -hmm. So Cutthroat's ability right now um, is deployed, destroy an enemy unit with two or less power, bonded, destroy an enemy unit with four or less power instead. Yeah, so a very potent removal, right? So uh, the, the regular deploy effect, it is quite situational. But the bonded one is very scary, right? Because you're kind of able to delete uh, four power engines regardless of if they have armor or not. Exactly. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Iron Falcon Infantry. Uh, three, four, at the end of your turn, boost self by one. If this is the only card on the row, bond it at the end of your turn, boost self by one instead. This one isn't exactly new. Uh, people will remember that this is basically old Magnet Vision. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, for a while we felt like this was actually a cool ability that felt like it should be on a neutral card. And since we wanted to reintroduce more bonded effects, that it went on infantry. Perfect. And lastly, we have Strays of Spala, 3 for 4. Deploy, shuffle a gold card from your hand to your deck, then draw a bronze card and boost self by 4. Bond it, boost self by 4 instead. Yeah, so Strays of Spala is a really solid uh, point slam, right? At 8 points for, for 4. Um, but it comes with this... Uh, uh, you know, disadvantage that mm -hmm. you actually have to put back a gold card exactly. uh, from your hand to your deck, which uh, can be an advantage in some situations, right? Like if, if you've missed your mulligan and you have a thinner card like Roach in your hand, sure, that, that can be useful. In <laughs> some scenarios, uh, you it can also help you out if you're being bled, like, you know, putting back your scenario in your deck, something like this. But in general, you're going to have to be careful about how you play that card. Perfect. Nice. So that's that. And we're moving on to our next card, which you've seen kind of featured throughout this um, mm -hmm. overlay that we're having here. So you pr probably everybody is expecting a uh, change to, to Gascon. And actually, it is. Or no, or actually, do we have... We have a change for Gascon, but we have a few more bronzes to talk yes, about first. Yes, we still have uh, Highwaymen. So my mm -hmm. Koopa, Highwaymen are here. Um, with armor now, and when you play a bonded unit that you already control a copy of, summon self from your deck to your melee row, exposed, move self to the top of your deck. Hmm. So, um, a pretty classic thinner, right? But that can easily end up punishing you if you try to run it in a deck that doesn't have too many bonded cards. Because, I mean, you need to be able to pull it out first, and then, if somehow it gets put back in your deck, it can very much break you uh, if you're not able to pull it back. Mm -hmm. An Iron Falcon Troubadour, a 4 for 4 deploy, spawn a 1 power locked copy of a Bernard unit from your starting deck on this row. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so another support card, and with this one, the idea is that you're kind of able to put a body on the board mm -hmm. that you can use to, from the get-go, your first copy of your bonded card actually be able to trigger its bonded effect. Yeah. Easy, simple as that. Cool. Now we can do Gascon. I kind of jumped yes. the gun uh, too early. Um, let's look here on Highwayman and Iron Falcon Troubadour. And we have our boy Gascon. So Human Bandit, no changes there. He is now 2 power, uh, 8 provision. Uh, this 8 provision stays the same. When in hand, deck or on the battlefield, whenever you play a second copy of a bonded unit this match, boost self by three. So he is rewarding you for those bonded uh, units that we have now. Synergy. Absolutely. It's going to be one of your main payoff for the package and he's a type of gold effect, right? Mm -hmm. um, so specifically the way it works is that uh, whenever you play the second copy of a specific bonded card right it has to be the second one it's not going to work multiple times for the same for the same card mm -hmm. um you will boost uh, go, gascon will boost itself by three yeah. and that way we're able to reward players for running uh, a lot of bonded cards and and having a lot of diversity mm -hmm. in the bonded cards that they actually run um and since the effect kind of works across the match, it means that even if you haven't been able to play both of your copies in the same round, so let's say you play the first one in the first round and then you didn't have the second one, so you get to play the second one alone in the second round, you still get rewarded by Gascon actually boosting himself. Perfect. Nice. Really cool change. I think um, it's going to actually open up uh people to try something new mm -hmm. and uh to check out the card but i like the i like cards that have this you know cumulative thing like you mentioned gord in the beginning uh, and their ability <laughs> so it's gonna be a it's gonna be an interesting one okay um last look at gascon and we'll be moving on to free company and a change here now the card is 10 provision um still six power and order Choose an allied bonded unit, then play its top copy from your deck. Cooldown three. So another a fairly straightforward effect, right? But uh, it ends up being not only a good support card, but also a good payoff card, mm -hmm. right? If you're able to use the order multiple time. Um, and and yeah, like it, it's the kind of effect that you end up thinking very quickly when you think of bonded, like, oh, I wish I was able to get the second copy. Yeah even though it's stuck in my deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Cool stuff, interesting. And uh, yeah, I like that one too. Moving on, One-Eyed Betsy is going to be mm -hmm. the cards that we're highlighting. Um, seven power, eight provision, new ability, which reads, deploy, draw up to two bonded units, then shuffle the same number of cards back in your deck. Order, replay an allied bonded unit. So the last of the golds we're doing, and another support effect, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So on deploy, it kind of allows you to rearrange your hand, and in particular, make sure that you have the proper bonded units you want, and you have pairs and whatnot. Um, while on its order, it allows you to kind of reuse the deploy of a card, right, by replaying it, which, um, you know, if in the meantime you've managed to make sure the bonded copy is there can bring you pretty good value yeah good stuff moving on we have a couple left um next one after we look at betsy once again uh we will move on to plumbered um for provision now and small change here to the bonded so you give an enemy unit bleeding equal to its base power instead so this part is new the provision, yeah, didn't actually change. It's only, it used oh. to be bleeding four, right, on bonded. Ah, and now it is this effect that is dependent on the base power. So in some situations, it's worse. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of situations, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, so the sharper members of our community will remember that this effect actually already exists. Uh, it is the effect of Armored Arakas. But uh, we actually haven't been happy about that card having that effect for a long time, uh, mainly because we feel like this is an effect that belongs to vampires, and in fact, it was kind of tough to just include Armored Arrakis in your vampire deck. 
until uh, our Monarch class effects will stay as is for now, but mm -hmm. we'll expect some changes in okay. the next That's update. A tease. That's a tease yeah. for 11.4. Okay. And uh, this is it for bonded cards for now. But, you know, as always, when we charge these kind of archetypes, we'll kind of look at the reception mm -hmm. and if there is subsequent stuff that we need to do. Perfect. Moving on um, to the new stuff, we have Agulam. Uh, we have a change here to the ability deploy create and play an artifact from your opponent's starting deck if your opponent has no artifact in their starting deck boost self by six instead interesting she steals stuff what a surprise <laughs> yeah so historically Angulam so play as a very specific meta counter right when a lot of people are decks were running very expensive uh, artifacts stuff like portal the scenarios uh, even the locations. Thing is, with time, we have introduced uh, a broader range of provisions in terms of the artifacts that you might want to be running. And because Angulem was taking um, a random target, it meant that its counter role was, you know, becoming much more RNG dependent, which mm -hmm. is not something we like very much. Uh, you know, artifacts like uh, Potion of Forbidden Knowledge, right? Uh, there is a pretty big gap between getting uh, the 4P that Potion of Forbidden Knowledge is yeah. and getting a 14 provision scenario. That's pretty cool. So, uh, we move to this create effect mm -hmm. that gives you more agency over what you're going to get. And uh, we've also addressed another thing we didn't quite like, which was the fact that depending on your matchup, uh, the card could completely whiff, right? If, mm -hmm. if your opponent had no artifacts, then yeah. you had you can't really use it. points. <laughs> yeah. So now it also has this boost by six effects. Mm -hmm. um, it still, you know, is going to be worse than if the meta was very geared to artifacts. So you still have to be mindful of what the meta is about. Mm -hmm. um, but we do think it makes it more interesting. It kind of yeah. reduce the variance of the matchup roulette. Yeah, it's a cool tech that option said, for sure. Yeah. In general, that makes the card stronger. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also have increased the provisions by one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, really cool design. Uh, really like this one. And uh, it fit, fits the theme of the character. So that's mm -hmm. always things that I enjoy. Moving on, we have Sappers and Bomb Heaver. And for Sapper, we have a new ability. Deploy, play a bomb from your hand, then draw a card. Barricade, whenever you play a bomb, damage a random enemy unit by one. Yes, uh, so the change in category is mostly because it was weird for Sapper to be bended. <laughs> they, they very much look like soldiers. Um, but basically, we're giving a small buff to the bomb archetype. Mm -hmm. uh, with Sapper now being a key card, that is both going to fill this role of like being allowing you to play more bombs, right? For its deploy effect, but also rewarding, rewarding you for mm -hmm. doing so, thanks to its barricade effect. And in the case of Bomb Beaver, uh, we've just slightly lowered the provision, uh, which makes it a bit more affordable and something you might consider if it brings you seven points. Perfect. All right. Um, and lastly, we have three more. We have Gimpy Gerwin, Wagon and Scout. So we'll start with uh, Gimpy. Uh, he, whenever you play another unit, damage all enemy units with the same provision cost by one. Yeah, so um, we reworked him into a kind of build around coward, but that we don't necessarily expect to be competitive. It's definitely more fun to play around sides or potentially pretty good if you find it in draft. Nice. Then we have Wagon, deploy, banish a bronze unit on the right, then gain resilience. Order, transform self into a base copy of a banished unit, expose, purify, self. Yeah, this is a pretty convoluted effect, yeah, interesting. but basically you may um, sacrifice a few points in the round that you're currently playing, right, through the deploy effect, and then that allows you to carry over a unit to the next round uh, through the order effect. But there is counterplay for your opponent, and if he manages to go through your armor, uh, well, the entire thing was in vain. Mm -hmm. Nice. And lastly, scout, deploy, move a unit to the other row. Yeah. So this effect used to be on Strays of Spala, 
But with it getting reworked, we kind of wanted to keep uh, movement effect in neutral. Um, and so we've both, you know, transferred the effect to Scout, but also reworked the stat line. Uh, Streets of Spire used to be 5 provision, Scout is no 4. Uh, so that will allow the card to be a bit more of a consideration uh, in, in, you know, the, the tech card mm -hmm. spot. Nice. And that's it for us. That's it. We got them all. We got them all. Lots of cool stuff coming with this update. Um, if you want to see all the details, like I said in the beginning, check out the patch notes. Uh, you have everything there. And that is going to be it from me and Jean. I will just also leave you with one remark. Um, starting with this update, if I'm not mistaken, we'll be bringing back products which were exclusive uh, to pre-order offers for our previous big expansions. So you'll be seeing some things coming back and hopefully um, you guys enjoy these but as always uh, don't forget to leave your feedback for us so um, we know what you guys are thinking and yeah that is gonna be it for this developer update uh, we will be back once again for the next one for 11.4 uh, which is also bringing some new cards and a new expansion a new theme and a new everything so i'm excited for that one but i won't spoil anything now uh, we'll have a video to get to that, so uh, can't wait for that. John, a pleasure as always. Thank you for taking your time to explain everything to us. Always enjoyable. <laughs> all right, everyone. Take care. Thank you all for watching, and we will catch you next time. Take care. See you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.